This is an FM stereo demonstration for ETE 335. It takes quite a bit of equipment to set up this demonstration as you can see. The key piece of equipment is this turn unit on the right. This is a Hickok stereo standard, very old unit, tubes inside, uh, but it is capable of putting together the complex FM stereo signal, multiplex signal. We call it a multiplex signal because there's a variety of signals involved in the, uh, in the FM signal. Of course we have a left channel and a right channel. Those signals come directly from these two spectra, these two function generators, one about 4 kilohertz and one about 7 kilohertz. The 4 kilohertz is the right channel and the 7 kilohertz is the left channel. But along with the uh, left and right signal, we can create mono signals, stereo signals, and also for demodulation at the receiver, we also need what's called a pilot signal. Other pieces of this unit are the, a, the FM uh, broadcast signal at 88 to 108 megahertz, and its attenuator, and then the output signal attenuator. So we'll start out looking at the stereo signal. As we can see, it's quite complex with lots of terms in the frequency domain shown in the bottom of the FFT analyzer. We'll just push the button to show the time domain. Time domain, very complex signal. Very difficult to tell what's going on there. The blue signal is a square wave pulse signal. So let's start with return from stereo and go back to mono. Here's a mono signal. The mono signal is the left plus right signals from the generators. All right. And there's a little bit of a distortion product we see there. Let me turn off one of the generators and we'll see which one we have left. And you can see we have a 4 kilohertz signal and a basic sine wave. So that's a 4 kilohertz signal, which is uh, one of the channels. I think I said it was the, uh, the right-hand channel. So we'll turn off the uh, 4 kilohertz or turn back on the 7 kilohertz and turn off the 4 kilohertz. You can see it's readily apparent that the distortion is looks like a second harmonic of the 7 kilohertz signal. Need to go in and figure that out. We'll turn the 4 kilohertz back on and then we see the two L plus R signals. So this is FM mono broadcast. All right? But of course we always use FM stereo. In order to do stereo we require something called a, a pilot signal for demodulation. That signal is at 19 kilohertz, and you can see it there. If we do the time domain, it's just a 19 kilohertz sine wave. That's all it is. Now that is used by the receiver to demodulate the complex FM multiplex signal. The uh, doubling of 19 kilohertz is, of course, 38 kilohertz. And it's actually the 38 kilohertz signal which produces the left minus right audio centered around 38 kilohertz. We'll switch to stereo and you can see the signals. On the right, we see the 38 kilohertz and the double sideband suppressed carrier signals of 4 kilohertz and 7 kilohertz above and below the 38 kilohertz signal. At the low frequencies, we see our left plus right audio and the pilot in the middle and the little distortion product in there. So that is the FM signal, very complex in the time domain as we saw before, uh, but readily understandable in the frequency domain. Just to for confirm our carrier signals on our pilots, we'll uh, look at the uh, frequency of the pilot over here, pilot at uh, 19 kilohertz, the doubling of the pipe, there's the 19 kilohertz pilot, here is the uh, 38 kilohertz, 
the doubling of the pilot signal and we can see that doubling. There is also the possibility of having a 67 kilohertz signal but we will not display that today. That's an added uh, modulation that can be used. So we'll go back to our stereo signal and of course we do not get an accurate frequency reading since there are so many signals involved here. So that is FM stereo in the uh, linear uh, spectrum analyzer and the FFT analyzer of uh, FM stereo multiplex signal baseband. Left plus right audio, left minus right audio multiplexed at 38 kilohertz. The 19 kilohertz pilot which you see in the center there is used by your receiver, the little red light on your radio, to demodulate the signal. So that is FM st stereo multiplexing developed back in the 1930s and 40s. Very smart engineers put that system together. It's been in place for now over 70 years and working fine.